पंजाब में पिछले कई दिनों से क्रिश्चियन और सिखों में कई डिस्प्यूट चल रहे हैं वहीं तरन में बनी चर्च में हुई बेद भी और अमृतसर के चंडियाला गुरु में निहंग सिखों पर दर्ज मामले और धर्म परिवर्तन जैसी घटनाओं से क्रिश्चियन और सिख लोगों में एक तरफ मतभेद उत्पन्न हुए तो दूसरी तरफ इल्जाम लगने का सिलसिला भी जारी है इन घटनाओं पर जलंधर विश्व हाउस के विश्व एग्नेलो रुफिनो ग्रेसियस के सेंट फ्रांसिस स्कूल में खास बातचीत करते हुए सिखों और क्रिश्चियन भाईचारे पर बहुत कुछ बोला और धर्म परिवर्तन पर भी अपना पक्ष रखा यू हैव आस्ट मी फाइव क्वेश्चन आई विल बिगिन आंसरिंग How do you see the relations between the Sikhs and Christians in Punjab? I see that the relations have been very good. All these years we have lived in peace. Christians, Sikhs, Muslims, Buddhists, everyone else we have lived in peace in Punjab. What I see now is that there are a few a handful of people who are trying to disturb this peace. and that is why they are creating incidents whereby the people will get disturbed that is how i see the situation today in punjab we have lived in peace and we will continue to live in peace we will not give in to these provocations by these people who want us who want to create enmities and hatred between people this is part of a campaign by some Western interests to create hatred, and that is why they have polluted the atmosphere in India, which was such a nice, peaceful one. And the same is true. They are trying to do the same in Punjab now. And I think all right-minded people, all those who have at heart the good of India, should resist these efforts. That is the first one. Secondly, the second. I'll go now to the first question first. It is up to the community to demand to demand anti-conversion law. Surely, everyone has the right in India to do anything, to to ask for even any kind of law. It is up to the lawmakers to see whether there is any justification to create a new law against conversion when there already are there provisions in the present legal system to prevent any forcible. conversions to people of people it is there and let me tell you that the anti conversion laws have been passed in so many states to the best of my knowledge i may be mistaken till today there is not a single documented case brought up that anyone has been forcibly converted that's why i want to stress we are against any for conversion by force of fraud such a, a thing is not really a conversion so we are against and anyone who practices such conversions by force and fraud should be penalized according to the law of the land that that is the the, the community has a right to put it is up to the people up to the law makers to see whether there is a need for such a law the third sec the next question how do you react to the jatedar who says that poor sikhs are being converted to christianity i don't have any figures to answer this if there are he should report this that they are converted anyone has a right to be converted i don't have a right to convert anyone but anyone has a right to be converted which means that he can change his religion or just as he can change the party he votes for just as he can change his house change his clothes he has a freedom that's a human right therefore conversion is a human right a man can decide when where, where, how he wants to worship god in which religion or in no religion at all he has a right even to be an atheist conversion is a human right which means that the person has a right to be converted i don't have a right to convert anyone that is god and the person but that person anyone has a right to be converted and i also have a right to be converted and i see the need of constant conversion in myself that i come become a better person and turn more to god 
So I would not know whether there are poor Sikhs being converted, if they have a right also to be converted, provided it is not done by any fraud or forcible means. Any Sikh, poor or rich, can choose to change his religion if he wishes to. The last, the one next question. Is there any truth to the charge that missionaries are funded by foreign forces? This has been a wild allegation. There has been very stringent laws of, for the foreign contribution. So as far I, I can't say of everyone, but as far as I know, all Christian community, all Christian uh, NGOs and Christian institutions abide by these laws. I can't say the same about the others, the non-Christian ones that are the, that also has to be investigated how much money is coming from abroad for these forces which are promoting communal harmony in India. They are receiving also money from abroad that has to be investigated. As far as I can speak of Christian institutions, we have all, as far as we know, abided by the law of the land. All of us are registered under the Foreign Contribution Act and everything is now centralized. It is with the with the State Bank of India in Delhi. So the government only has to press a computer button to see how much money is coming in to any of these institutions. If it is coming outside these sources, it has the right to investigate and to punish those who are receiving so money outside of the, of the law. So I don't think there any truth the charge that Christian missionaries, see missionaries are brought to there can be Hindu missionaries, could be Muslim missionaries, Christian ministries, as far, missionaries, as far as I know, are abiding to the, with the law. Isn't it true that unlike earlier times, there are scores of pastors active across Punjab? They are being perceived as a threat now. That is true. There are a number of, of pastors uh, active. We can, uh, Catholic Church has a very strict rule by which a man will be ordained a pastor or a priest. He has to go in for about seven to nine years of training before he is ordained as a priest, what we call a pastor. So it is a long term, long preparation in theology, philosophy, in the humanities, in languages, so that he can be a fit shepherd, a fit pastor for the people. The word pastor means shepherd. So, but there are other groups which don't have such strict demands. Anyone among them can claim to be a pastor once he reads the Bible and explains it. They are not accountable to anyone, neither to us nor to any other human, any other body. So we can't hold a brief. We would like to say they, these are not Catholic pastors, not Catholic priests. They are surely don't belong to our fold. As that is the last one, the last one. As I said, I feel all of us, whether we be Sikhs, Christians, Muslims, all of us, let us work together to promote harmony in the state and in India. We all worship one God. It is sad that we should have to fight in the name of God. Let us sink our enmities, our, our differences and work together for the good of humanity. The good of humanity is the final religion. Well, human welfare is what we should always promote. Thank you so much. Chalandar Devinder Singh ki report, SMZ News, India.